Yeah, so the whole family in there. So uh, <clears throat> I don't really have anything prepared. You can ask questions or I can make a couple comments, whatever you guys What's want. What's your reaction to this? Well, you know, we've talked about this, uh, this whole process for a long time, and I, um, this is the worst process that I've ever had to go through uh, as district attorney in my whole career. Um, all these these victims were uh, the surviving family members were told that the sentence was final um, and in cases like this that the, it was life without parole and you have to have some finality in the justice system to have people believe in it and the appellate courts have said that uh, no we didn't really mean what we said and, and to see the families have to go through this again on top of the original loss of their loved one and then appeal after appeal and now this whole thing uh, just sort of uh, reopens the wounds. And, and there's no words I can, I can use to describe it. When I say reopens the wounds, I mean, this is the worst thing that's happened to the, to the family member. And that doesn't mention the fact that, you know, a uh, person's been killed, an innocent person's been, been murdered. Her life's over. There's no second chances. Um, she doesn't get an appeal. She doesn't get a do-over from the appellate courts. None of these victims do. And, and, it's, and it's just, it's extremely difficult to sit down with the, with the family members and say this is way the way it is because it it just isn't right and and having said that um, the law in this case called for due to her age being 17 um, she was 17 and a half she was six months basically six months from that we wouldn't be here if she was six months older because um, she would be without life life without parole so we we've got that the legislator said the guidelines would be 30 years for the minimum he gave uh, 28 so. It's not what we asked for. It, it's more uh, in, in some ways than maybe what, what we might have seen. So um, there's that. Uh, ultimately, you're talking about a couple years difference. Uh, and for us, from our perspective, the case has always been about Laurie Show And all these sentencings, all these things you hear about, um, it's just frustrating that the discussion is always about the perpetrators and the killers. and, and we forget about the victims, and I, I don't mean to imply anyone forgets about them, but the process is focused on, on, uh, on the defendant, and and that's the hard part of dealing of dealing with these cases. So, um, it's not what the legislator asked for. It's close uh, to what it is. I think, and I would hope that one of the reasons she got a little bit more than maybe uh, what they were asking for was, uh, from what I understand, absolutely no remorse, and even when prompted uh, by the judge. Her comment was like, well, what can I say? What else can I say? How about sorry? You know, uh, you've had plenty of time to think about this and to know that you're going to be, um, your sentence, you're getting a chance, another chance at it. And, and even if the words maybe weren't hollow, at least for the family members, come out and apologize. And, and that's a concern. Um, disappointing. We've seen some of these defendants, I think, express some true remorse for their actions. We've seen others, not so much and not at all, and, and this one, uh, I didn't hear uh, any of it. Um, um, and again, they have time, they know when the date's coming, they have a lawyer, they have time to prepare for this, and uh, it's not all about remorse, it can't all be about remorse, but boy, um, sure would like to hear it knowing that they're gonna be released, and whether it's, whether it's in a few weeks or, or a couple years.